Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite real estate land website, thelandgeek.com. And today I've got a special guest. I've got Paul from upstate New York. And who's Paul from upstate New York, you're wondering? Well, Paul is one of the freshest students to go through the grind of the Investor's Toolkit. And he also joined the Gold Mastermind program. So I thought it would be really helpful and valuable for the podcast listeners who haven't gone through this to get a perspective. What's it like to go through it? Uh, how's it going? And uh, it kind of learned from Paul's experience so that it kind of reduces that element of anxiety. Hey, what's it really like to go through the Investor's Toolkit or the Gold Mastermind? So, Paul, how are you? I am, I am good, Mark. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your crazy schedule. Yeah, I, uh, I tend to juggle a lot, um, which is, uh, I think, one of the things that drew me to your program um, was, uh, you know, the virtual assistant concepts and um, and not having to make it a, a full time job. Right, right, right. So so tell me a little bit about your background. Um, well, I, uh, I I've done real estate for quite a while. Um, I, uh, I had a builder that was in my family and I, and I learned a lot from him um, because of that. I, I did build my own house on uh, the first piece of land that I bought a few years back. Um, from there, I've kind of continued to buy land and, and slowly do a, some small development, new construction stuff. Um, while doing that, I've uh, been doing energy auditing. Um, so I'm in and out of tons of houses. Uh, and I, I kind of have a, a broad range of uh, real estate and, and anything to do with houses and land and new construction. Um, so I'm kind of all over the place uh, with uh, even further back background in uh, computer information systems and um, things like that. So I, I like the technical piece and um, the creative part of it. Uh, so I, I do a lot of different things. It's hard to classify my uh, skill set. Yeah, you've got, you've got a great skill set, especially for land. I mean, was there anything that drew you about land as opposed to single family homes or? Um, you know, uh, it's, it's actually pretty simple. I already own houses. Uh, you know, I own two, two family houses. I own a condo, uh, down in Florida and, um, I've, I've built one of them and I, I rehab the other one, um, and rehabbing where there's certainly a great carrot at the end of that stick for the, the right person. Um, it's a lot of extra work and it's a lot of time. Um, I've been sitting and speculating on a couple pieces of land that I bought and, um, you know, going through your your marketing that was uh, kind of drawing me in. Um, I'm like, you know, the more that I think about it, I haven't spent any time on the land that I've been speculating in um, where I'm constantly uh, dealing with issues with my real estate and uh, and rents and um, clogged toilets in the middle of the night. Uh, you don't get that with the land as much. Um, so I think that's what really kind of was the initial draw in. Right, right. Yeah, th those three T's, no tenants, no termites, no toilets. Yeah, exactly. uh, didn't hear that one, but it's uh, kind of like the yeah. That's a that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. So, were you, now were you skeptical at first? Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm I'm I watch the commercials and the ads, and everybody's selling something, and um, you know, there's certainly a, a million uh, get rich quick schemes. Uh, you know, I won't lie. I did my due diligence. I looked at all your websites and everything that I could find. Uh, you know, related to. The land geek and uh, frontier properties, and um, you know, I I did it all. Uh, I looked everywhere, and uh, you know, I knew there was an underlying secret. I didn't know how much I would get from the program, but I knew there was something that I was lacking. Um, you know, one little gap, uh, and I found it. Um, that to the point where I realized that I had been buying land wrong. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's certainly interesting and. Uh, it's only been 30 days. I actually think I purchased, I made payment on October 14th. So it's been exactly uh, 30 days um, since I signed up. Right, right. So how how long did it take you to actually even watch all the videos and go through the supplemental information? Um, you know, there's a, a, a good amount of information. Uh, I liked how you organized it by what you should start with and, and where you get to. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. I probably haven't finished everything yet. I, I kind of stopped somewhere in the middle. 
Um, and that's that's really for my own learning curve. Uh, you got a, a lot of information and it's a, a lot to digest. Um, and, and I think I, I'm going to start with the first half and um, which is more of the how to acquire the land versus how to sell the land. Um, and then and, and then finally getting into how to automate the whole process. Um, you know, I, I'm doing it a little bit slower because that's how I learn better. Right. Um, and I'm really just working on on how to acquire the land right now. Yeah, I, I like that method, actually. I think that uh, that's, that's not really a, a, a bad way to go about it because it seems you know, like you're chunking it, right? So right. first, let's just focus on getting a deal and, and doing deal flow. And then I'll worry about due diligence, right? And then after I do the due diligence, then I worry about closing it, marketing it, and selling it. Right. So, um, um, I like that. And that's where I am. That's where I am today is that uh, due, due diligence. Uh, like I said, I, I, you know, I sent out my, uh, my first offers uh, not too long ago and um, Thursday, I think it was. And, and yesterday I actually got three, three uh, potential options, you know, going on uh, projects. One of them, actually one was just a, a bad news one and the other two I'm doing my, my due diligence on uh, right now. So less than 30 days, I'm already looking at deals. Amazing. So how many offers did you send out and how long ago did you send out the offers? And how quickly are you getting back feedback? I, I want to say it was Thursday or Friday that I sent out approximately 80 to um, somewhere down in Florida. Okay. So about a week ago or less than a week. Is that right? Veterans Day, we lost, um, you know, a day in the mail. Uh, but, you know, I had over, I think, four four responses um you know people that got back that that reached back out to me in less than a week that's a, that's a huge response response rate are you doing anything different with my letter did you edit it some way um you know i i, I doctored it a little bit um not a ton i, I did doctor it a little bit i i made it a little bit more uh i guess less i don't know if i want to use less personal because your, yours isn't very personal um I think I just add a little bit more branding to it um, and, and cleaned it up and, and reorganized it a little, a little bit. Um, nothing major, but it's, it's, I'd say 90% your, your document. Okay. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, all right. So you, you, you went through the letters now, did you hire a VA to do it or did you do everything yourself? Um, you know, it's kind of complicated. Uh, you know, certainly just like anybody I had in my beginning struggles, uh, trying to get the ball rolling. Um, I, I did, I did hire a VA to do more of, um, data entry work, just, uh, changing some lists from PDFs back to Excel documents. Um, I didn't really go down the road for, a, a you know, using a virtual assistant as far as, uh, due diligence or, or deal checking or, or mailing. Um, you know, I want to be a little hands-on. I really want to get my own processes built. Uh, you know, certainly your, 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 your program provides great fundamentals, but, um, you know, I still want to be a pioneer and I, I want to do it my own way. Sure. Sure. And really, and that's, that's the way to do it. Right. I mean, I think I talked about this in a podcast was the Samsung method. So, you know, the iPhone comes out and, and Apple's killing everybody, right? Nobody can get any, get any traction. All the market wants is an iPhone. So Samsung can't get any traction. They're like, you know what? Screw it. We'll just make another iPhone. And they just literally copied it, you know, and started selling it. So you'd go in to Verizon and they'd just push a, a Samsung on you to say, oh, it's just like the iPhone. But now they're iterating it and they're making it, you could argue now, Samsung's more innovative than than uh, Apple. I mean, would you agree? An avid Apple hater, so we can we can bang <laughs> heads on this all you want. Um, hit, clapping for Samsung if that's the case. <laughs> okay. So you know, I, I say that sitting on an iPad. Um, I'm making myself angry, but yeah, I'm, I you know I've uh, it's it's you have to innovate. Um, you know it again. There's the good fundamentals. Uh, you, you really connected the dots in the program um, and exact method works great for you. But, um, you know, I, I obviously want to put my own little special twist on it. And, uh, you know, the, the old saying, student surpassing the teacher. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I think that's, that's really great. And, 
And now that you're in the gold mastermind, you're listening to not just how I do it now. You hear how Jeff does it, Tori does it, Duran does it, and, uh, you know, Jim Lewis or whoever else, you know, that's in the platinum. So you're, you're getting a broader spectrum of, of, uh, of how people do it. And then what's great about it is that you're taking that and then making it your own, doing your own branding. And I mean, that's really a recipe for success. I don't, I don't see how you, you can go wrong with that recipe. So you take the, the fundamental information and then you twist on it and you make it better. And you, just like any other company, um, that's what they need to do, right? So they don't want to reinvent the wheel. They just want to make it a little better. They want to iterate it and carve their niche in the marketplace, their unique selling proposition, and, and go from there. And, and that's what you're doing. And it's only been 30 days. It's pretty remarkable. Uh, it's, 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 it's great. Um, have you had any background in the past that you can kind of draw from and say, oh, yeah, this is how you do it? Um, you know, I guess I, I kind of had, like I said, a, a broad spectrum of background. So I've had a little bit of real estate. Um, I've had, uh, you know, some, some land buying and, and the contracts itself. Uh, you know, I, I kind of know what to look for a little bit. So I, I cut down. I have that experience. Um, I did web development in my, my younger years. So uh, that kind of helped me with getting my, my marketing going. You know, Fiverr is always a great place to, to cut down on the little tasks like copywriting and um, logo design and, and things like that. Uh, so, you know, I, I kind of pulled a, a lot of different resources uh, to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I guess I came with a, a good fundamental of, of what you were doing. Uh, without knowing uh, the tricks of the trade, so to speak. Right, right. So after going through it, were there, were there any parts in there you, you'd be like, ah, this isn't so great. I already know all this. Or, um, you know, which, which, which aspect was like, oh, yeah, this is different. Uh, obviously, the how to, how to get all the deals. Um, that that obviously was the the biggest thing for me. Um, like I said, I can't speak too too much onto uh, the the selling and the VA stuff because, like I said, I, I haven't dug too deep into that yet. And I'm um, I'm sure I'll throw you my constructive criticism when I get there. Um, I just uh, I'm, my uh, my focus is on that. I didn't want to overwhelm myself. I wanted to come running back and say, Mark, here's my first deal, um, and uh, and accomplish that one thing to kind of move to the, to the next one thing, which is selling it um, right. and then automating it from there. So, you know, I, I probably am dragging my feet a little bit on, on getting too far ahead of myself, but I, I think I do that just so I don't get lost in the mess. No, I think the focus is great. I mean, the focus is great. So we kind of talked about the gold mastermind and I thought it was interesting your, your take on it, which was, Hey, you know, I'm not there yet. You guys are talking about all this stuff. You're dissecting deals where when you first start out, it really should just be about, hey, how are you getting these deals and what are you doing for deal flow and for the list? And I thought that was really interesting. So um, kind of tell everybody like, okay, you joined the Gold Mastermind and what was your take from it? I mean, it's it's great. You, you, you really listen to some really experienced people um, that have been doing this for a while. Uh, and it's, I guess the best way I can explain it is like going to college and you got the college professors, uh, that, uh, had done something or practiced in that field for years. Um, and they're talking about it like it's everyday life, but you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm still a student. I'm nowhere near that, that realm yet. So, you know, there's a, a lot of knowledgeable minds uh, that you can grab information from. Um, but I think, like I said, since I haven't got too far ahead yet, I was, you know, I was really looking for what's going to help me today. Um, and, and a lot of the, the, the gold mastermind stuff I thought was, was rather advanced. Um, you know, you guys were talking a, a lot about how to market and, and sell these properties. And I'm like, well, I still want to get a property to try to sell, um, a lot about analytics and, and, uh, you know, furthering your, yourself on, on mediums like Craigslist and, and the other ones that are out there. And I just wasn't there yet. Um, so I'm listening to it and I'm like, man, this, this, this isn't going to help me today. Uh, so, you know, that's why I kind of threw that one at you. No, and I think that's great. And, and like any, you know, smart 
business, we're going to adjust. We're going to adapt to meet our customers' needs, right? So what did I do? I pulled you into a platinum mastermind so we could talk about the things that you want to talk about as a newbie. And how did you feel about that, that call? I mean, did you feel it, was, like it was great. You know, again, I got to kind of ask a couple of the questions that I needed to ask, um, you know, and get some additional advice. Uh, I, I tend to try to talk to my family and friends um, about what I'm doing and they look at me like I'm, I'm crazy and it's, it's never going to work. And, um, and, and, you know, I kind of already put signed, you know, contracts in front of them and they're like, how, how did that even happen? I, this didn't even make sense to us. So it's hard to, to speak to like-minded people and, and really be able to talk about what I'm doing um, and, and get people that have been through the experiences and, and went through some of the, the, the troubles that I'm, I'm trying to overcome um, and, and to get really to get started and, and to get to the level that you're at. Right, right. Did you, did you tell your, did your wife about this? I, I fortunately do not have a wife. Oh, you're, oh, you're not married. Okay. So who did you tell about this and what was the reaction? Um, you know, I, I did explain it to my girlfriend and she does like, she always does while I have a million projects going, she smiles and nods and says, that's great. Um, I told, uh, you know, a, a, a guy that would be kind of like a business mentor to me. And he said, uh, you know, the same old, same old, if it's too good to be true, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. Right. Um, and I said, but it, it's not, it's, you just have to, you have to put, put more into it and, um, be more creative about it. And, and, you know, there is that opportunity out there. Um, you might not get a yes the first time, maybe not even the first 80 times, but you know, you're, you're not looking to, to take over in one day. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a grind just like any other thing. It's not a miracle, make a million dollars tomorrow. Um, you know, you still have to put in the work, you have to put in your own creativity and your own twist. Um, but you know, a lot of people looked at me like I was crazy when I built my first house at 24. Uh, they're like, why, why would you build a house? You, you just sold a motorcycle to build a house. So, you know, your friends and your family that aren't always necessarily as driven as you are, aren't always the best resources, uh, when you're telling them about your, uh, crazy land buying business that you're starting. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think Duran and I talked about this once because if, if this works for you and you're successful, you know, what does that say about that? Right. They have to kind of look at themselves in the mirror and be like, oh, I'm not, you know, as ambitious as Paul. You know, he's going out there, he's making things happen. And that's kind of threatening, right? I mean, yeah, here's, well, here's someone taking massive action to accomplish their goals, and I'm kind of not doing that. So I'd rather you, no, 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 this is, it sounds too good to be true, or, you know, this can't be, you know, don't do it. Right. And, and I certainly got it. I, you know, I got the people that know know me and and how I operate uh, that kind of go, uh, you know, if if Paul's really going to dig into this, he'll probably make it work like like everything else. Um, so you know, I have uh, my own little fan base of of people that know that I am the one that's always creating and, and concepting and and trying to find a, a better angle um, to to make things happen. So. You know, I guess I didn't get a ton of speculation, but the idea is it's a little crazy. Like, hey, I'm going to buy land in the desert and sell it and make money. And people look at you like, huh? Uh, you know, they have they have no idea. Right. Uh, you know, especially in, in this real estate market, people are even more skeptical of anything to do with real estate. Yeah. My my first year, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. I may, maybe it been two years. I was actually kind of embarrassed about it. Like it didn't it didn't seem. Right. Like, okay, I just bought property, you know, for like nothing for under a thousand dollars, which in my head seemed like, oh, someone's going to think it's worthless. And then I sold it on eBay and made 300 to 500%. And like, you're selling land on eBay. And that almost sounded like, okay, this doesn't sound right either. So I, I actually didn't tell anybody about it for like a year. And then when, it really started going and started hitting. I, my confidence kind of grew. I'm like, Oh, this is kind of a thing. And it probably took maybe a few more months after that, before I started confiding in friends and telling them what I was doing. And their reaction was, uh, really? You sure? Is it legal? Well, that's, I got, I got the, is it legal question from probably just about everybody that I, I brought it up to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it is, it is right. It's, uh, yeah. but it's, it's an interesting niche. 
It is. It certainly is. And like I said, I, I guess I wasn't bashful about it because I am the guy that low balls everybody anyway. I'm the guy that goes to the the theme park and tells the guy at the door that I'm not paying $40 a ticket. I'm paying 20 And I really don't feel like throwing a fit in front of everybody. You should probably just let me in for 20 So I think I even tried. I, I think I attempted three or four different angles on, on beating you up on the price. Um you know, oh yeah, yeah, we we did negotiate, didn't we? On the yeah, tool. that's just that's to the the guy that I am. So it doesn't really surprise uh, the people that I'm around, but that's that's what I do, and that's that's how I got where I am. And now I just found a way to do it for even cheaper. Um, so you know, it really is right up my alley, and everybody's kind of like, yeah, that makes sense that you would be doing something like that. Um, so I guess I wasn't really bashful about it because that's that's who I am. I'm the haggler. I'm I'm the guy that likes to find deals and and make things work. Um, it was kind of a perfect fit when I saw it. And again, I, I've never bought any online training ever before. Um, so this is something totally new to me. And, and, you know, do I think it was a waste of money? Not, not at all. Uh, you know, even if I don't become the next millionaire landowner, I learned a, a pretty cool trick, uh, to, to implement in some of the things I've already been doing. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, and you can take a lot of these skills and apply them in other places besides real estate but i i really love this land niche just because you know there's no physical inventory there's nothing to maintain and it's a one-time sale and then you can do recurring revenue if you're not doing flips honestly like i can't think of anything better and i've tried and thought about thought about it and and done these mental simulations like okay what's better than this and I'd be open hearing it. I, I really, I don't know. Well, there, there's, there's the, the two toughest things. If you ask anybody that owns a business, um, the two toughest things in business are finding quality help, um, which this is really, you could do it on your own. If you had nothing else going on, um, you could really do this full time by yourself and not need a VA. You could do this completely on your own. Um, if you needed help, again, you can find the, the virtual assistants. Um, you can, Turn them and flip them and, and burn them if you really wanted to. It's not like you need somebody to man your store or you're, you're going to lose money today. Um, right. And then, and lastly, inventory. You know, theft is the number one hardest part of business. Even if you're doing new construction, you're still losing things left and right. And you, you really have nowhere to, to have anybody steal. It's not like somebody can pick up your piece of land and, and take it away from you. Uh, you know, so there's definitely some huge pros there when you think of a, a typical business model. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, I never thought about the theft aspect of uh, of building, but you're right. Um, in fact, I see like, any, uh, like a developers. Liquor like, store, a, a corner store, any business that you have, theft is always one of the biggest things you have to worry about, you know, and it's not there. What are you, what are you going to steal, my land? I mean, I guess the worst case scenario is if you actually put up signage which I don't believe you're, you're even doing. I'm if you not. put up a sign and someone stole it, even realtors experience that pain. So you don't even have to deal with that. Right, right, yeah. I mean, my biggest nightmare is, is just something happening environmentally to the property, right. which, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I just, it's never happened, but, you know, I think about it. You know, this could happen, especially like, uh, you know, like the Philippines. You know, something like that. Like you're buying in Florida, like, oh, God forbid, there's a hurricane. Uh, see, I, I don't look at it that way. When, when I heard about the Philippines, um, again, this is the the person that I am. I, I was trying to convince my friend that we should go over there and buy some uh, wrecked motels on the beach. <laughs> uh, you know, they're probably selling them dirt cheap right now because it's just the foundation left. Um, that That's how my mind works. So. Right. Uh, you know, I'm like, oh, great, natural disaster. That means they're going to rebuild an entire community, new buildings, new hotels. And now I bought the land cheap um, and I'm in a, a busy market. I mean, that's what Donald Trump did. You know, he would buy land where it wasn't necessary and then he built it and then cities built around him. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I love the way you're thinking. The op You're seeing opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. It's great. It's great. So what was your biggest frustration getting started? Uh, certainly probably finding the information, um, you know, getting, getting the lists, uh, and, and getting them ready to, to send out, um, was probably the harder part. I definitely say that that was my, my biggest thing. And, and even that wasn't so bad. Um, you know, there's some great, I mean, Excel does 
things for you and Microsoft Word takes, you know, does things where you, where you don't have to do anything by hand, really. Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of coming up with it and, and really building the fundamentals uh, and just getting going, you know, getting out of your own way is always the hardest part. Uh, really saying, I'm going to do this. And, um, but, you know, I, I guess it would probably be finding the information that I needed for the areas that I wanted um, and then getting getting out of my own way and saying, okay, maybe this area isn't viable and I have to find somewhere that I, I can get the information that I need. Right, right. So how did you start? Did you do some market research on some places in Florida or because you're, you're from upstate New York, I think, oh yeah, I'll buy in, you know, my, my back, my, my, uh, uh, you know, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? My backyard. I certainly wanted to start in New York. Um, and it, New York is a tough state for anything you want to do. Uh, they, they do, their information is, is kind of hoarded and, and hidden and, and doesn't come out. Um, you know, very early. It normally takes four or five years to get the information that you want, and then that's four and five years old. Um, so, you know, I, I struggled with New York. Uh, Florida has a great information-wise, land information-wise. It's a, it's a lot more open and easily accessible with with no cost. Um, and I, and I certainly wanted to keep my costs down in the beginning. Um, I'm willing to spend the money in the future once I get a few deals behind me in, in the states that are a little bit more difficult. Um, but I'll be honest and say I really didn't do a ton of market research. I just wanted to get my first deals going. I wanted to get my feet wet. Even if it was something that I didn't end up buying, I wanted to get an offer back. I wanted to go through the the agreement and, and the paperwork and, and kind of figure out what I was doing first. Um, and then I'll, I'll probably dig a little deeper into market research. You know, one thing that I did learn, and, you know, I know you mentioned that you didn't really like sharing this with your friends, but by talking about it with a few people, I found out some pretty cool things that I wouldn't have known on my own, such as, uh, you know, I'm going to target an area where uh, the state plans on building X amount of windmills, right? So the land's going to become more valuable. They have to build these windmills. Um, am I going to get anything? Is the information too late? It's possible. Um, but I I'm going to try to speculate a little bit on something like that. Now, you know, in another state, uh, agriculturally, they're, agriculturally, they're making some changes, um, and I'm going to try to grab some rural land there and, again, speculate um, for some buy and hold versus buy and sell. Uh, so there's, you know, there's different methods to my madness. And, and like I said, I'm I'm always all over the place. Yeah, I mean, one of the best deals I, I ever did was doing the exact same thing, except I went, I went after geothermal. And uh, so, you know, we saw the applications going in and we bought property where they were, they wanted to put the, the geothermal line. And I own the property. So they contacted me. They, they wanted an easement through my property. I said, no, you've got to buy the property. And uh, they had to buy my property. And they had to buy it at a price that, you know, they had to have it. Right. So I was really in such a, a strong position of leverage for them to even continue their business. So I think that's a great uh, model. As You know, once you kind of get to that next level, okay, now I know how to do this. Now here's some different opportunities. Where are people doing different projects? And I can kind of speculate here, speculate there. Geothermal, solar, you know, developments, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So um, that's great. That's great. Well, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but I, have you have you listened to the podcast before? Um, you got the you investors know, toolkit. I, I I probably listened to one or two before getting the investors toolkit. Um, then there was so much content to digest from, from the investors toolkit. And then I started going to the mastermind, some dead time. I'll, I'll listen to a podcast or two. Um, I don't have an, an, an Apple device. So, um, I kind of have to do it right through your website, uh, in order to listen to it any other time. So if I'm, if I'm down doing some research, um, I kind of been backtracking through some of them. I, I'd say I probably listened to maybe six or seven so far. Okay. Okay. Well, as you know, then I'm going to put you on the spot. What is your tip of the week? It could be a website, a resource, um, whatever it is. Gotcha. Um, I'd have to make mine, my phone system. Um, so, you know, you recommend using Google voice, um, and Google voice is a great free product. 
I'd rather spend a couple dollars and have a superior uh, product. Um, and I, I'm using uh, Ring Central, uh, which you can technically get into relatively cheap. It's like nine dollars a month or something. Um, they do make you sign a year contract, nine dollars a month. Uh, so it's one hundred twenty dollars a year. I think it ended up being, um, and it's just such an incredibly powerful project. So instead of letting the phone ring to me and then just going to a regular voicemail, I kind of have a, a really neat uh, voice broadcast that says, you know, thank you for calling. You know, nobody's here. Uh, did you, did you get an offer? Press one. Did you, did you want to buy land? Press two. Uh, did you have anything else you needed to discuss with us? Press three. Um, when you press any of those prompts, it brings you to a, a next step, which then brings you up to its own voicemail pool, uh, which allows you to have a, a, a next voicemail and and, um, and then it all dumps right into an email and you get an email that says, hey, this is a seller's voicemail. This is a buyer's voicemail. This is a, a, a different voicemail. Um, so your phone never really rings. It takes that extra work out of it. You don't really have to talk to people if you don't want to. You only call back the people that you need to. Um, so it really saves you a lot of time and, and keeps everything central right in your email, uh, all your voicemails. Everything's there to go back and, and reference if if needed. All right, great. I love that tip. Um, in fact, I'm going to play with Ring Central myself, and uh, and get back to you. And let you know how it's going. Um, and, and and I think it includes an 800 number and a fax, right? Yeah, it's all included. It's like nine bucks a month to start. Yeah, I think it's nine ninety nine with a year contract. So again, it's 120 bucks a year. It's great. You know how much a PBX system, like a corporate PBX system, costs. Yeah, uh, a, a lot. Actually, they they even offer a virtual PBX with addition to voice over IP phones um, that you can have multiple phones and multiple lines in, in your place of business as well. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm giving you the, the bare bones package that I have. It actually can be much bigger than that. Ringcentral.com. Great, great tip. All right. So my tip of the week is going to be a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be an outsourcing tip. So I found uh, a place for developers. It's kind of developer centric. So for your website, your landing page, um, I'm, I'm getting uh, a Stripe integration put in. So like Stripe competes with PayPal. And uh, so it's, it's peopleperhour.com. Peopleperhour.com. It's, it's a little bit more developer centric and uh, I'm having pretty good success with it. Uh, I found a developer in India, actually, that bid on my project, and she's doing great. And uh, uh, so I'll let you guys know how that goes. But uh, peopleperhour.com is going to be my tip of the week. Paul, can't thank you enough for spending time out of your frenetic, chaotic, crazy day and week to uh, join me on the podcast. And uh, yeah, you know, how do you feel about it? Would you do this again? Absolutely. Um, you know, if, if I'm available, I'd love to join. Uh, it gives me a chance to, to pick your brain a little bit, too. All right. Great. So and uh, if you guys want to learn more tips, tricks, techniques, how to make money buying and selling raw land, go to www.thelandgeek.com and download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. I see people making every day. Get this podcast delivered each week to your inbox, and look, give me some love. Duran's not here. You don't have to go to reserveland.com. Give me some love. Go to frontierpropertiesusa.com. Invest in some wholesale land. Uh, Paul's working on his uh, first few deals, so I don't have a site to plug for him. If you want to acquire some property in Florida, pennies on the dollar or wholesale. I shouldn't say pennies. He's buying a pennies on the dollar, but I'm sure he's going to be selling it at wholesale uh, for quick sale. Or How are you going to sell that, Paul? Uh, I haven't figured that out yet. I'm probably going to either throw on Craigslist for now and, or give the option to you. Um, you know, maybe I can even, uh, convince you to, to pump it out to your followers. Absolutely. Uh, that, that's I'll a good question. It. All right, great. I'm, I'm not afraid. I'll, I'll sell it fast. So, uh, thanks to everybody for listening. Leave us a comment on iTunes. Let us know how we're doing. And, uh, this is Mark Podolsky, the land geek. And Paul, thanks again. We'll see you next time. No problem. Thank you, Mark. Have a good one. Thanks, Paul. You too. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.